London. Well, we can put some of Justin's points to Rachel Kite, who is the dean of the Fletcher School at Tufts University. Rachel, you've held various high-profile posts, including at the World Bank Group as vice president, as also as special envoy for climate change. What we're seeing with this lockdown due to coronavirus is unprecedented. Is there, can we have the best of both worlds going forward, or do we have to decide, make a choice between the economy and safety? Well, I think that most economists and most um, actually business leaders and a number of financial leaders think that there is a way to walk through this uh, this particular moment and balance the needs of the planet and our own human health with the needs of restarting the economy. What we're seeing is that in energy demand has come all the way down, transport demand has come all the way down, we're not flying, we're not driving, uh, there are less ships moving, uh, our energy demand has come down as well. But what we've seen is in the cities where there are maybe power plants inside city limits, uh, their energy uh, demand has come down further than their emissions, uh, than, than a city where there is no uh, energy being uh, developed inside the city. So we can see that while you're walking and I'm cycling and we're not driving, it's those big things, it's the energy generation, it is the large manufacturing, that's where the bulk of the emissions are coming from. And so in the stimulus to get that back going again, there have to be conditions uh, with the public money that is going to be given to those firms to help them to uh, shift more quickly onto a greener path. So all of that behavior change that we're all demonstrating now has to be capitalized on by government in the way in which it rescues uh, companies and businesses going forward. Given that so many companies are at the at the brink of uh, breaking down, of not being able to reopen because of what's been happening, because of their lack of earnings, is it, is it too much to ask going forward that they then have to re-look at their whole business model and, and consider the environment as a priority? I don't think so, because um, the direction of travel was already clear. The climate crisis is the one that's sort of right in front of us, in front of us. And this, you know, what this crisis has done, this pandemic crisis, has revealed to us our lack of resilience from poor quality air. And so this has just heightened um, the awareness that we have to do something. Businesses were already aware of the fact that they had to decarbonise. The financial sector was already beginning to show that it wanted to see decarbonisation plans from businesses. So the things we can see are like, for example, the French government, the Austrian government, talking to their airlines and saying, OK, you will get public funds to help you move forward, but we would like to see less emissions per mile, less emissions per passenger in return for that public finance. You could see that the renewable energy sector has actually picked up the strain and is holding the energy system uh, quite well. So when we start looking at the jobs that we need going forward, then there are more shovel-ready green jobs in renewable energy in all the in in the buildings that have to be made more efficient. So I think that government can actually just nudge us in a quicker direction than we were already travelling. Rachel, we don't have that much time left, but so briefly, if you could, are we ready for those kind of changes? Of course, the environment absolutely crucial, a crisis that we need to focus on, but it's a seismic change for us. So people are worried about the enormous unemployment possibilities and the, the depression that we may find ourselves in. These are job rich opportunities. There's lots of jobs in renewable energy. There's lots of jobs in making our homes more efficient. There's lots of jobs in green infrastructure, green hydrogen. There's lots of jobs in tree planting and land reclamation. We don't have to uh, dig ourselves further into a fossil fuel hold in order to escape this crisis. Rachel, on that note, we're going to have to leave it. Rachel Kite there, the Dean of the Fletcher School at Tufts University. Thank you so much. I'll be back with the next edition of Outside Source. Thank you for joining me. I hope you'll be back in the next few minutes.